a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and packs. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do continue, let's give a brief little review. In the last part, quite a number of things have happened. First of all, we had Shigaraki. Shigaraki thought today was just going to be very interesting. Kill a few students, kill All Might, well, stir up a bit of chaos, the whole shebang. He thought they were going to kidnap students, kill the rest, and head back to base. However, what happened is one of the main people on All For One's hit list turned out to be an actual threat. Deku, he murdered villains. He took on the Nomu and copied his powers before almost murdering Shigaraki. And Shigaraki, he felt what it was like to have decay put on his own body. And that was painful. Kirigiri saved Shigaraki, and Deku killed the Nomu. Before encountering All Might and all the quirks he, well, duplicated, if not copied, in the last hour, all rapidly had a boost in their power, and Deku's body went crazy. Now, Deku was then shot by a pro, he shot back, killing the pro, and Mizuki told All Might the entire story about what happened to them. They were kidnapped by the Hero Safety Committee and trained to be killers. They then left. Now, Bakugo Kaski, he was there. He saw the whole thing. And right now the heroes, they're in a bit of a spot. Snipes' murder would be published. And the events at the USJ would be published. How for the three missing students, right now that's a bit up in the air. They are told or said to be connected into these murders. And there is the fact that they do at least publish the names but they do not publish the pictures to try and keep their identities a secret. Right now there are two different dots here. One is from over 10 years ago with a boy claiming to be part of a project to become a pro hero when he's older. And here is the current day, where somebody who knows that boy, who knows the real boy's name, they said they were kidnapped by the Hero Association and trained to kill, be the black sheep of hero society. And that is something that All Might, he's having a hard time believing. But I mean, this is, as far as he's aware, something that all, something that all of UA, they've never heard about. I mean, people heard this guy claim to not know who Izuka Midoriya was, but that was clearly him. And Bakugo said the name Izuka Midoriya on the first day. Right now, Bakugo... He's not connected to this, but it's part of his own past. Now, with that being said, Bakugo, he's actually a bit more interrogated. And Deku, he was trying to calm down getting these quirks out of his system. And right now, the three are somewhat back towards step one or two. All might he listen to them. However, he's having a hard time believing them. Now, with that being said, we do actually pick up in a hotel. One where Deku, he currently is sitting there in the hotel room, and he is trying to think about what to do. Right now, things are complicated. Things are tricky. And right now, after he does walk down the hallway, he does open the door. Him walking into the large room as he does sit down. And right now, after he does Godoki shapeshift back to normal, he does Godoki stretch his neck and try to think about what to do. As right now, Mizuki does walk into the room and asks Deku as she does go to sit down exactly what's going on out there. And Deku, he does try to explain. A lot has been happening. Right now, their apartment's been sectioned off. It's being investigated. And heroes, they're asking a lot of questions. Okay. And the committee? That's also hard to say. I've been going out. So far, it's nothing. 
So far, the committee, they haven't found Lady Nagant either. But they think I committed that murder. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, though, the fact that she did it, it says quite a bit, right? It does, actually. I mean, either she snapped or she realized that things aren't right. You think that she snapped? Maybe. I mean, think about it more. The first time me and her met, she was a little paranoid. Then again, that could have just been suspicion. It's so weird looking back on it. Okay. Well, the hero committee is going to find out we're here sooner or later. And I have an idea. We need to find information. Find a way to get to them. We can't just look for them. We need to find their agents. And I have a better idea as to how to do so. Rather than just trying to run around as a vigilante and be found out by someone. Be hunted or encounter a hero. Okay, so you have a plan? A little bit. But I don't really like it. Because it gets real personal. Personal? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, not trying to be rude. You do have the disguises we've prepared for this, right? Plan A or Plan B? I'm not too sure. Listen, just, um... Get prepared and I'll shapeshift a bit. Afterwards, we can get things ready. Now, Mizuki does go stand up. Her walking away, and right now going to get changed. And Deku, he actually stand up. He himself changing his face to be different, and even changing the color of his hair. And right now Deku, he does go to Deku, stand up, and stretch a bit. He still does have a few thoughts as to what happened back then. A few days ago, in fact. He took on All Might's strange ability, and his power. That feeling of it, the impression it left on his body, it's so weird. After that one got out of his system, his quirks felt better controlled. He felt like he could manage them. But also, he felt like he was pushed to the absolute max. Everything was cranked up to 11. And then there's that voice. He heard a voice. It could have just been delusions, but he doesn't think it was. The voice sounded, well, comforting. And that's all he does really remember of it. It was a comforting motherly voice. Now, Deku, he does stand there. And right now Mizuki does walk out, and Deku does go to turn and see her. As right now she does stand there with a blonde wig on, some makeup on, and some different color contacts. And right now Deku does stare at her as she is in a simple outfit. Now, Deku does not smile and tell her that that will work. Because he doesn't recognize her. Her smiling and Doki walking out of the room with Deku. Now, Deku would leave a message with Ochako. And currently Ochako, she herself is doing some investigating. She's a bit more concerned. And right now she actually is trying to find a few leads on, well, the committee. Now, we actually do have Deku. Who? Deku. He actually is going to be getting involved in his former life. A life he thought long died. Now, we do actually have Bakugo Katsuki. Who, since Yue has been on break, they haven't really had time to go to school. And right now, he did answer a few questions at the police station. And Deku... Using his ability, he looked online and was able to look into public records. Not only did he find that Bakugo he was recorded going to a police station, he also was able to find Bakugo's address in a police report. Now, Bakugo currently does, well, walk into his apartment, as right now he does look around the building. The complex looks empty, and right now he's assuming that everybody might be at work. Currently, it's the weekday. 
and it actually is closer to noon. Bakugo, as he is talking to somebody on the phone, he is actually getting a few questions. So it's this guy from your past? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. I, I just don't get it. It's so... I just don't... He just changed. Now, right now Bakugo, he does look up. And as he does so, his phone, it does cut out. And Bakugo, after looking down towards his cell phone, he does see a message on screen. As it does tell him, don't. Now, Bakugo does look back up. And right now a man is standing there as he is looking to walk forwards. And Bakugo, he's concerned, getting ready and bringing his hands up as the face does change. Along with the hair color returning to normal. At least to a darker color for Deku. Now, Deku's face doesn't look, doesn't look like, well, his fake identities anymore. His face doesn't look like Kozo. His face looks like a Zuku. But his expression, his demeanor, he's, he's really changed, hasn't he? Deku does walk up. And right now, Bakugo, he does try to keep his ground. However, he does feel his entire body shake. The fact that Deku is standing in front of him after 10 years, and he knows it's him, he knows what he's capable of, it's um definitely intimidating, to say the least. And Deku, he does look up towards him. Him bring his hand out and telling Bakugo. He has a few questions. Uh, dude, I have questions about you. Bakugo, that's not what I'm here for. Not what... You nearly killed that guy. And then you killed other villains. Jesus, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? You want the answer to that? Try that fucking program. How about the fact that there are people like you? People who crave power. Who want power. People like you are the reason why I am the way I am today. If you can't control power, you use what you can find. You gain power. And then you let people try to think that you're in charge. However, swinging your dick around like that, Bakugo, it only gets you so far. You've changed. A lot changed me. Whenever you're forced to kill a man, Bakugo, that happens. Now, Bakugo does stare at Deku, and Deku doesn't just go to bring his hand up. Him bringing up fast and pointing at him, saying, bang. Now, Bakugo does jump in, well, real backwards. And Deku does smile, telling Bakugo, he's not here to hurt him, dumbass. <laughs> Dude, you're fucking psycho. Right. Listen, I'm not gonna bother brainwashing you. If I don't have to. So I'm just going to ask you this question. Do you know anything about what happened to my parents after I disappeared? Uh, I, I didn't. My mom didn't really keep in contact. Hmm. Right. Not long, but after my dad signed that stupid paper. You're serious about that, right? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I was, um... I wasn't even seven where I watched a man die for the first time. Oh. Mm-hmm. And, um... Hurting people. That didn't come easy. It, um... It wasn't fun. Izuku, there's still... No. What? I said no. You you want to try and redeem me? Bakugo, this is who I am. I've been trained to do this. I don't feel calm unless I'm not. And just know, the hero community used me as their dog. I killed and covered up violent pros. People who did bad things. And I'm just going to ask you again. Because I don't want to answer any more questions about that. Do you know anything about my mother? Now, 
Baku understood, I think. Him falling silence. And he does tell Deku. Maybe if he asks his mom, he'll find out. And Deku, he does accept the offer. Him telling Baku to lead the way. And Baku, he's a bit intimidated by this. And Deku, whenever Baku, he does go to someone open his mouth to refuse, Deku does tell him. His address hasn't changed. What? You still live in this building. Your address didn't change. I already know the apartment number. Come on. Yeah. Baku doesn't try to fight. He knows what Deku is capable of. If he has his quirk, that means it has lasted for a long time. That or it's permanent. And he remembers Deku's quirk. Physical contact. If Deku had prolonged contact with him, he also had prolonged contact with that Nomu thing, right? And Baku does ask the question. Does Deku still have that monster's powers from the USJ? I do. So you could rip me in half if you wanted to. Yeah, I could. That's why I'm being peaceful with Bakuko. Besides, I only murder villains. And while you're not on that list yet, you're still a student. Bakuko turning back and informing Deku, he did kill a pro. That was an accident. Murder is still murder, Izuku. I know. Are you capable of it? Bakuko falling silence. And right now, Deku, he does watch Bakuko open the door and walk in. As Deku does walk into a building he hasn't really seen in a long time. Or a home. Now. There actually is Bakuko's mom. Mitsuki. Yeah, that's her name. Now. She actually is annoyed that Bakuko, he's running late. And after Bakuko does walk in with two people she doesn't recognize, there actually is where Mizuki... She does stare at Bakko's mom. And she's got to say, the resemblance, the resemblance is quite uncanny. Now, they're going to stare at Mitsuki. She really hasn't changed. I mean, she still looks just the way she did whenever he was younger. And Deku, he does feel a bit of nostalgia. And right now, there actually is where Mitsuki just stared looking at Deku. And she's kind of confused. Now, Deku does look towards Bakugo, telling him, that will be all. You can't just order me around. Now, Bakugo is brainwashed. And right now, Deku, he does look towards Mits Mitsuki, or Mitsuki. I just now realize how similar their names are. Now, Mits Mitsuki, she actually is confused by what's going on. Her asking about it, as there actually is where Mitsuki... She does tell Mitsuki to sit down. And right now, after she does go to follow that order, Deku does sit down with her. And right now, Deku, he just starts to ask questions. However, not much is really learned. As far as she's aware, in Komodoria, she moved away. But that's also a problem. The Where she moved to was another city. And if she's correct, that's because Deku's father works over there. But if that's the case, then why is it that the files or records don't add up? Were they deleted? Is that it? Now, Deku does go through a few things. And right now he does continue to ask Mitsuki questions. And Mitsuki, she does try to answer them to the best of her abilities. Now, Deku does learn that Mitsuki had contact with her mother a few days before he believes that she may have been murdered. There are records on file. There are things that have happened. And he's not too sure what has been faked and what has been real. Apparently there is an incident report of her possibly being killed because of a home invasion. But then there's also a report of an accident or... No. What was it? It was something different. And there's actually the fact that the two may have gone missing. But there are actually public files about them going to America. And that's something that Deku, he does not really like. The further and further he's tried looking into this, the more and more paths seem to open up. 
Is she dead? Is she alive? Is she being kept alive somewhere? Is she out of the country or what? What did they do to his family? Now, Deku, he finally does get at least some information from Mitsuki. And right now, after Mitsuki had to think about it, she did at least hear something. Whenever Deku asked her exactly what does she think happened to his mother, Mitsuki, she does finally at least go to say something. She's not too sure who it was, but she remembers hearing on the news about a report. A report stating that somebody died in a home invasion. Deku, he does try to at least explain. And she does say honestly under mind control, she isn't exactly too sure. From what she does remember about the segment, she didn't really pay attention to it. She does know the building was the same one Inko said she lived in. And the married couple, they were killed in a way that left them unrecognizable by people. They could look at public records and do DNA tests. However, as far as she does understand, that was the only way they ID'd the bodies. And Deku, he's a bit annoyed. And he does at least try and shout at her to dig deeper. Tell him more. Tell him the damn truth. And there actually is Mizuki. Who does at least tell Deku to back down. Because right now, she's doing all she can. Quite literally. She's piecing together memories that are just fragmented. And that's actually putting a bit of a toll on her mind. Especially because she's trying to force these memories back to the surface. And Deku, yeah. Right now he does go to bring up his phone. And he does actually try to search for this article. And he does specifically put in the apartment building she said they lived in. And Deku does find something. And the people, they were identified, but their faces aren't given. And Deku does see that. It was a married couple. And whenever Deku is trying to at least ask for the room number, she does at least go to give it. And Deku, he does look into more public files. And then he does find something. Something that doesn't add up. And there it is. He found it. Now, Deku does leave. And after he does leave, there actually is where Mizuki just order both of them. Forget this all happened. Her turn to Bakugo, telling him, go to his room and forget he ever met Izuku today. Now, Bakugo is going to do so. However, he does go to his room, their actions with the brainwashing, and immediately wears off. And Mitsuki, she actually is confused over the door to his clothes, and her focus has come back. Her looking around, as she actually does go to he looked down towards her phone. And not only is there a missed call, but there's also... Hold on a minute. Ten minutes? Her confused. Ten or fifteen minutes have passed by, and she just remembers looking at the TV and then just... Here. But the door... No, her, her brat came home. That's right. But he, did he have guest? No, that little fucker doesn't have friends. <laughs> Anyways. Now, with that being said, there actually is Deku. Right now, Deku, he has a lot on his mind. And Mizuki, she actually is trying to calm Deku down. Deku right now is searching for his family. Searching for his parents. And this isn't going too good. Right now, Deku, he is searching for graves. And Deku, after Mizuki does walk up to him, she does get directly in front of him. Bring her hands onto his shoulders and telling him, Take a breath. What if we find your parents dead? Her freezing. We... We kill the bastards. That's right. Now, she actually has got a jerky, bring her hands in and hug Deku. And tell him. Right now, he is losing his cool. Can he do her a favor? Yeah. I'll calm down. I'm just... I'm a little freaked out, freaked out by all this. I'm... I feel like... I'm taking a trip through memory lane. But memory lane keeps shoving a needle in my back. Right. I get it. 
it's hard for you. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm trying to keep my cool. But the more I look into this, the more I want to fly straight into that Hirokuni office and blow that place to kingdom come. Find a telekinesis quirk, rip it out of the ground, and chuck it into the goddamn sky. Okay. Well, her bring her hands up. And Doki grabbed one of the Sedeka's face, telling him, as she just look at him in the eyes. Well, they could do that. How will they find a better way to handle them? He does need to know. No survivors is their best option. And Doki does not smile. That kind of calmed him down. But at the same time, he's also, well, worried too. Somebody already murdered the chairman. And with that already happen, happening, there's the fact that somebody, they might have gone underground if they've been involved with this. And then there's actually another possibility. If there's an agent waiting for them at the end of this, who will they run into? I mean, he's worried. He knows that he can handle them. But what if he can't? His powers were already overloaded once, and he's been trying to be careful. Avoid physical contact, avoid running in anybody with powers he hasn't copied a set of before. And that's worrying to him. Now, Mizuki actually sees Deku's expression. He went from pissed to thinking, to, well, thinking more, and then a bit more of fear. Not as if he was afraid of something, but he was afraid of what he could do. What his powers were. And she actually said, well, go to Dirky, lean forwards, and kiss Deku. Deku would bring his hands up, grabbing onto her before he's not pulling away. Him telling her as a stare at her that that did help him out. Did it help you calm down? It broke my thought process for a minute. Okay, listen, the guy's not leaning forwards, telling her, right now, they'll handle this, they'll do this, and then, they'll look into her and Ochako, but he's not too sure what they'll find, and right now, Mizuki, she doesn't understand, however, their actions are Deku, he does make a phone call, and right now, we do have, right now, we actually have in a warehouse, Rochako, she has to stand there, sitting in front of somebody, and she actually is holding, on, holding onto a metal object. Her asking the person again, exactly when are they going to be honest? When are they going to tell her what she was hired to know? When are they going to spill the goddamn beans? And then actually her phone is going to buzz. Her and Doki and Doki look down at it and answer the phone. Hello? Hey, Rochako. What's up? They go hearing in the background someone scream out for help. And right now, Ochako, she made this to bring up the object and smash the blunt side of it directly into the person's face, telling them that the person she's talking to won't help them. In fact, they'll probably help murder them. So shut up, otherwise she'll make a more painful way for him to die. And Deku, he actually hear that. You busy at the moment? No, I'm fine. What is it? Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, we're trying to get the Hero Committee's attention. Find somebody involved. Did you find anything? No, I ran into a dead end. I think those guys are going underground. Yeah, me and Mizuki kind of figured that out. We assume that with the heroes possibly looking into them, they'll try and be cautious. So we're trying to stir up trouble for them. Okay, so what's your plan? My plan is to try and search for our parents. What? Yeah. I found a lead so far in mine. Okay. How long have you been searching? About 30 minutes. I didn't know if you were busy or not, so we didn't call you. Well, we left you a voicemail, but 
I'm assuming your phone wasn't on silent. Now, Ochako does look down towards her phone, looking to see if there is a message she did miss. And right now she does, I mean, you get a jerky bring the phone back up to her ear. Yeah, sorry, um, I was a bit preoccupied. I heard. So listen, after we look into what's going on with mine, we'll look into Mizuki's. And, well, if you're not back before then, we can try and find a lead on yours. I found some discrepancies that already now seem odd in mine, so they'll probably help if we look towards yours. Hmm, okay, sounds good. Now, Deku, he does go to hang up the phone, and Ochako does look towards the person, and informing them. Well, they were very loud and intrusive on her phone call. So, her standing up, and I'm immediately going to walk towards the table, asking them, which one should she use? She'll give them ten swings. And if they really can stand it, then she can put them out of their misery. But all this could really end sooner. She just wants the information. That's all she's really here for. Now, the person is yelled Ochako. And Ochako, she does get back to work. Since time is money. Now, with that being said, Right now the heroes, they're trying to piece together what to do. I mean, all this sounds crazy. And they're trying to find any leads at all. But this operation, this whole thing, nothing about it really does exist. And the file for Izuku Midoriya that they've looked into for days, it is nothing but empty. But there actually is his quirk on file. His quirk on file, it is exactly what they thought it was. And that's just the thing. They were concerned. Bakko knew what Izuku's quirk was. And that only helps to solidify the fact that this is that kid. But then there's also another thing. In the Hero Association a few years ago, there was something that happened with Izuku. His father worked for the committee. And that does actually give close ties to Deku and the committee. But... How does it all factor into this mysterious Black Ops program they're apparently a part of? And that's where the mystery does come in. Now, right now there actually is over somebody else. Somebody is currently trying to hide. They're on the run. They're trying to hide and stay out of the public view. But that's a bit easier said than done. Because this pro-hero... They found themselves in the midst of a very fucked up situation. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.